Some people call them workshops, I call them themed parties. But you can call them as you want. What matters is what you can do with them and how they can help you. So let's go. Theme parties are a type of workshops. You can use them to promote yourself and your products, to create awareness or to get that quick cash injection that you need. It depends whether you want to sell them or not. Now, my advice is sell them. And when you talk about selling them, sell tickets. Try to give everything a name and make everything sound special and unique. Of course, other people might have similar ideas, but the way you package your products, your services will definitely make a difference. So, for example, I have my six-week program helping teachers move from teaching one-to-one to evergreen groups. Now, I could have named it Move from Teaching One-to-One to Evergreen Groups. <laughs> um, but that would have been long, not creative at all, and so, so boring. So, instead, it's called empowerment. <laughs> now, of course, knowing what the program is about makes more sense of what the outcome is. But let's go back to our theme parties. We'll first talk about ideas for kids, then ideas for adults, and we'll also think about what you can do online and what you can do face-to-face in a classroom. So instead of calling it Christmas party or Christmas lesson, why don't you call it decorate Santa's grotto or a day in the life of a North Pole elf? So all children would love to be elves for a day and create Christmas things. Now, of course, this is an English lesson or a French lesson or a German lesson. So the parents are going to be waiting for some kind of learning. So you need to introduce the vocabulary, but you don't just have the kids, you know, sit at their desks like during a regular session, hide or stick on the classroom wall some pics of books or Santa's belt or Rudolph the reindeer, a Christmas tree, tinsel. You get the idea. Then get a kids to run around the classroom and gather the vocabulary cards. And once they finish, sit them in a circle, so not at their desks. And they need to name the items. And if they don't know, then that's when you teach the word or the phrase. Then they can create a Christmas card or a Christmas decoration or learn to sing a Christmas song. <laughs> and uh, don't forget to hand out sweets at the end of K. So that's the most important thing for almost any type of party. Now, you're going to have access to some videos I've created based on what I used to do back at my language school. Now, I only teach online at present, so some things don't apply anymore. And I only work with adults, so (laughs) you get the idea. So what about online? Well, This is a very good question because you can also have online parties. For any online party, I would get the parent involved for younger children. Send templates via email to be printed out and you can turn that into a mommy or daddy and me Christmas challenge, for example. Um, Or a competition between pairs of parents and children. Each pair creates something, then everyone votes on the winners. Normally, these sessions would be shorter, around 30 to 45 minutes, because if they have to sit down a lot, it's going to become boring at one point. You can't animate, let's say, the party as you would with them in the classroom. But you could make it a bit more interactive by asking children to run around the house and bring items they associate with Christmas and Santa and show them to the camera. For example, they can bring their boots, their coats, their hats, their scarves, maybe some bubbles, um, mummy's traditional cake. (laughs) So loads and loads of things you can do to make it a bit more funny or interactive. So you get a point. Now, thinking about everything I've just said, do you see how much fun these activities would be for everyone? Parents, children, also the teacher. (laughs) Um, If kids are happy and excited, parents are happy and you'll immediately build trust. The parents are going to think this teacher really knows how to engage my child and make him or her learn without even being aware he or she is doing that. So now let's move on to teaching adults. 
I do teach Christmas vocabulary even online, as this is, you know, something they'll need at one point in their lives. But adults normally want to improve their communication skills. So I normally quickly move on to quizzes and speaking topics. Again, choose the title for your session. I wouldn't particularly call this a workshop as they don't have to do many practical things like kids. For example, that's why themed parties seems to be a better title because they include everything that has a topic, a theme. So for adults, both online and offline, New Year's resolution might be a better topic. Giving it a yummy title, such as New Me at the end of 23, <laughs> could be a good idea. Now, this year in class, I actually mixed worksheets from A1, A2 and B1, B2, so I can accommodate even lower intermediate students because I have a certain evergreen type of group with students studying either basic or intermediate or students who are in between can attend both sessions. What I actually did was to introduce Be Going to Future for intentions and then I had them talk about the resolutions and I also introduced some phrasal verbs and idioms related to resolutions such as cut out, cut down on, <laughs> out with the old, in with the new. You get a point. So the way in which you do the activities, your overall presence matters the most. You have to be excited. Wear a Christmas hat, bring or show to the camera your New Year's outfit or show something you'd like to wear. Introduce the lesson topic in a funny way, like show them pictures of you before and after you took a decision and made a change, <laughs> like uh, you were a bit overweight and then you were slim <laughs> or the other way around. Take a packet of cigarettes like the carton and break it into pieces and say, that's it, I'm going to quit. Throw some chocolate into a bin and bite from an apple. So make an impact, shock them somehow, do something unexpected because they'll love it. So today's episode is not about actually giving you lesson plans, but lesson ideas and how to use theme parties or workshops to promote yourselves. So let me tell you about the first party we organized. This is the case of a private language school, okay? But these activities can be adapted. It was a free Halloween party and it was our choice back then to keep it free because we were basically unknown <laughs> and had just opened the school for a few weeks. And we targeted year one pupils. Now, if you're going to come and work with me at any point or follow my podcast, you're going to see that I think that it's really important to have your niche or even if you want to do something more general, still be an expert at something or target a certain group when you want to promote yourself or do certain activities because running after everyone is not going to give you the students that you want. So we targeted year one pupils and you can do that too. Find a connection, find someone you know, a parent, a teacher to help you give out some flyers. So we did get a few kids and over the years, these kids actually attended several of our courses because it was not just a language school English, you also had French, German, Italian, Spanish, and also music classes like guitar, singing, piano, loads and loads of things. So what we did was we had my secretary <laughs> back then play the role of a witch. And one of her friends was a princess. And my stepmom was actually the storyteller. The witch had kidnapped the princess and she was keeping her in a prison. And the kids had to do some kind of activities to get good points and free her. So they had to taste yucky Halloween foods. They had a dancing contest, costume contest pumpkin carving contest where the parents were involved um, and uh, finally they got to the witch and the princess and they freed her now fun fact the kids actually were so involved they started <laughs> hitting the witch <laughs> so we had to get her out of there because they were like so why did you do this to the princess you're so mean <laughs> <laughs> it was it was quite fun. So please explain the rules clearly from the very beginning, okay? <laughs> so 
You can do this for any celebration or any topic, Valentine's Day, Easter, Christmas, uh, first day of spring. You can talk about seasons and nature change, the summer holiday, talk about holidays and the seaside, or I'm an astronaut, talk about planets and space, baby shark, <laughs> talk about underwater creatures. We had these types of sessions or workshops or whatever you want to call them, for example, for first aid, I created a great activity based on something from the Red Cross, some videos on how to give first aid when someone is found unconscious and they had to see if the person was breathing or if the person was injured and move them into that position until the ambulance came. We also had musical instruments where the teacher actually knew how to play the guitar and the kids tried some of the instruments we had. So, you know, the sky's the limit. So let me know if you have ever organized theme parties with your students, uh, kids or adults, and tell us about your experience. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our episode zero of the Empowered Edupreneur. This is a podcast for language teachers and coaches who want to create better lessons, who want to gain more skills, who want to grow and scale their business, who want to overall make an impact on people's lives. And that's a wrap. Bye.